this video carries on from the last one where I looked at um, finding stationary points uh, without the calculator and now we've got the calculator as a tool to help us do that. Um, process is the same however, um, you know those, those basic things we talked about last video, finding x-intercepts, uh, y-intercepts, dominant term and uh, stationary points. Uh, and their nature, maximum or minimum. Uh, the same basic things um, are necessary to be able to draw an accurate graph of this function, x cubed plus 5x squared minus 8x minus 12. Okay, so I'm going to use my calculator as a tool here, and um, a very good thing to do straight up is we've got this function to save us typing it in all the time. We're going to define it. And I've defined it here as uh, f of x equals... Uh, x cubed plus 5x squared minus 8x minus 12. And uh, to do that, um, in your calculator screen, you go to Menu, and uh, Actions, and then Define, and you define your function. From then uh, on, you can do lots of things with it. You can uh, solve it to equal something. You can factorise it, all sorts of things. So it's good to define it straight up. As you can see now that I've done uh, the definition of f of x, I can now factorise it. And I don't have to uh, type in the whole function. I can just go, please factor, calculator, f of x. And uh, remember to factorise its uh, menu. Then select algebra. Selection 3 usually. And then uh, factor is selection 2 factor. And you can just put in f of x, watching your brackets there. You can see we factorise it now. Um, and it's x minus 2, x plus 1, x plus 6. Now if we were finding uh, x intercepts here, we factorise it and it's pretty obvious straight away that the x intercepts are going to be uh, 2, 0. Neg 1, 0, neg 6, 0. Now, there's another way of going about this, of course. Um, we could have asked it to solve that for equal 0 straight away. So, you can see there I've got solve, f of x equals 0, 4x. Um, now, remember to get to solve, it's menu, algebra, um, solve. So it's choice number one. And always remember, as I sometimes don't do and sometimes forget, you must put that little comma x in there. You can't just put solve f of x equals zero. You must tell the calculator what you're solving for. And you can see there I got to that same point uh, that I got to a minute ago. There are my x-intercepts, neg six, neg one, and two. To find the y-intercept, unfortunately when I did my cut and paste here, I've left the cursor there, so it's, it's covering over the... Um, F there a bit, but anyway, to find the x intercept, sorry, the y intercept, you make x equals zero. So we've got this function called f of x. So to find out what it equals when x equals zero, we just use f of zero. We can see there that gives us neg 12, which gives us a y intercept of zero, comma, neg 12. Okay, now to find stationary points, we get the derivative and make it equal to zero. And you can see here, I've asked the calculator to find the derivative of my function. With the risk of repeating myself here, you can see what an advantage it is to define f of x straight away. So we don't have to keep typing in the function. Okay, so far we've solved with it, we've factorised it, and now um, we're actually getting the derivative of it. So d dx, f of x, once again watching brackets, and uh, there we go. To get to... Um, that screen there. To do this, it's uh, menu and we go to calculus, which is option number four, and then derivative, which is option number one. Now, there's a couple of things we can do here. We can find derivative at a point. I'm going to go about it a different way. Um, Sometimes we have to graph the derivative, so I like this way a little bit better. So what I'm going to do now is once I've got that derivative, I'm going to define a new function called g of x, okay? And g of x is going to be the derivative of f of x. So notice how I've done that. Um, I've gone to actions and define again. I'm calling g of x 
the derivative of f of x. That saves me having to now type out into my calculator the derivative all the time. That equates now to g of x. Okay, so when I'm dealing with the derivative now, I don't have to um, type it in the calculator, I can actually use g of x. So to find derivative, uh, sorry, to find turning points, stationary points, we have to make the derivative equal to zero. So that's what I've done there. So g of x equals zero for x. We see we get our two uh, x coordinates there, neg four and two thirds. To find the y coordinates, we put those into the original. Remember our original was f of x. So if I put neg four and two thirds back into the original, I get the y coordinates, which are 36 and negative 400 on 27. Okay, so what are my turning points now? Well, I know they're going to be negative 4, comma, 36 and 2 thirds, comma, neg 400 on 27. So they're my two stationary points. Now we have to find the nature of those two stationary points. Uh, so we set up the gradient table. You'll notice there I've got the y coordinates. I might change color here so you can see it more clearly. I've got the uh, y coordinates in that box and that box there, and surrounding them are uh, other x values one lower than neg 4, one between neg 4 and 2 thirds, and one greater than 2 thirds. So we're looking for the pattern here. We know the derivative um, when we put negative 4 into the derivative, there we get 0 because we're putting negative 4. Uh, into the derivative, we're finding the gradient at that point, and we know the gradient at a stationary point is zero. So zero and zero in there. So then we have to find the gradients at neg five, zero, and one. Find the gradients, we place um, th those values there, neg five, zero, and one into the derivative. Just realize I've made a bit of an error with my table here. I really should have had f dash x there. Okay, so I'll just fix that up. There we go. There we go. So I'm putting uh, those values into the derivative. Now I defined my derivative before, remember, I defined it as g of x in my calculator. So I can now put negative 5 into the calculator, uh, into the derivative, sorry, 0 into the derivative, and 1 into the derivative. And when I do that, I get 17. Okay, and that's positive. So here I can put positive. I get neg 8 for 0 there, so I've got negative, and I get 5 when I put 1 into the derivative, so I can put a positive there. So what's my slope? Positive, 0, negative, 0, positive. Okay, so let's analyze our two turning points now. We've got uh, negative 436, and because of the uh, pattern there of... Uh, um, either side of negative 4 of positive 0 negative okay so we get positive 0 negative that means we've got a local maximum uh, the either side of 2 thirds we've got a pattern of negative 0 positive which gives us a local minimum Now ready to draw our graph. Now time to draw the graph for all the information that we've got. And I've cut and pasted lots of uh, stuff that we've discovered as we've done this question. There's our x-intercepts, neg 2, neg 1, and neg 6. Uh, uh, sorry, 2, neg 1, neg 6. So as you can see, um, uh, they've been accounted for. 2, neg 1, neg 6. Uh, my y-intercept. 0, neg 12, so that's accounted for down here at neg 12. Uh, and then my two stationary points, which we just looked at a moment ago, and there they are over there. Okay, um, and I've labelled all those. It's time now to draw the graph. Its dominant term is positive. Um, the coefficient of x cubed here is positive. So we're starting in the top right, and uh, we can now construct our graph. So down through to, through there, oops, a bit shaky, let's just go straight through anyway, and then 
down through here like so. There's our graph of uh, f of x. All done. Okay, so there's an example of you know the way. If I just go back a few slides, you, know, you can make things easy for us with a calculator available um, by defining functions and using you know defining derivatives, solving, factorising, etc. to make the job easier for us. Okay, that's all for now.